starting with remdesivir. Again, remdesivir is a antiviral that was originally developed to, in an attempt to treat Ebola. When tested for Ebola, it did not effectively clear the virus from the body. It did not perform well in those trials. Essentially considered a failed Ebola drug, but the antiviral, when tested in animal models and in laboratory tests where viruses were grown in petri dishes, it appeared to have some efficacy against the coronaviruses that cause SARS and MERS. SARS and MERS also originated bats, we believe, passed through other animals on their way to infecting humans and sparked outbreaks earlier in the 2000s. Um, they're directly related to this new virus, SARS-CoV-2. So when the new virus emerged, people began testing whether remdesivir could also offer any sort of antiviral effect against the SARS-CoV-2 virus. It in, was um, soon improved for compassionate use in select groups of COVID-19 patients. Compassionate use meaning essentially that the FDA gave the go-ahead for doctors upon approval from, from the FDA um, to be able to use that drug in, with patients that they were currently treating. So it's not something you could get outside of the context of a hospital. And theoretically it works by imitating one of the building blocks of viral genetic material. So the bits that make up, line up in sequence and make up RNA which constitutes the base of this virus. These bits are called nucleotides and remdesivir closely resembles a nucleotide. So what it does is it squishes into that RNA sequence and renders that portion of the RNA ineffective basically. Um, and what we're seeing now is we think that in the case of SARS-CoV-2, it blocks the action of an enzyme, which is a protein, from interacting with the virus in a way that allows it to replicate its genetic material. Replicating its genetic material is required for spreading throughout the body, continuing the infection. So if that can't happen, the virus itself will um, die off in the body. So we're getting preliminary reports from smaller case studies that did not include control groups. So it wasn't, there was no point of comparison against the patients who were receiving remdesivir. So even if there were market improvements, it couldn't be contributed confidently to the drug itself because it could have, there could be some contribution from a placebo effect, or there could be some other unknown factor that was contributing to patient's improvement. Now, we are getting reports from a very large placebo-controlled trial of more than a thousand patients from around the world that was led by the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease here in the US. And Anthony Fauci, who is the director of that said institute, um, announced yesterday that within the group of patients who received remdesivir, we're seeing that there was a roughly 31% improvement in terms of how quickly those patients recovered from the illness and were able to be discharged from the hospital. We don't know how they tracked improvement in symptoms specifically through time. The paper itself has not been published yet, so all those details are, have yet to be reported. But the people who received remdesivir took an average of 11 days to recover from the illness as compared to 15 days for those who received a placebo medication. And this doesn't sound like a huge difference, but it does demonstrate that the drug was blocking the virus from replicating, which was the goal. It also appeared that those in the remdesivir group generally had a lower mortality rate, although this data still needs further analysis at this point. So the early data look as though people within the group, there was an 8% rate, mortality rate as compared to about 11% in the placebo group. And again, until that data is completely analyzed, um, those numbers aren't actually statistically significant. So we can't say for sure that remdesivir 
was what made the difference is that is what that means so barring further analysis of those data that's at least a promising trend and all those included in remdesivir clinical trials at this moment the reason they're they're giving this data before the analysis is done is because those in placebo groups who are not receiving remdesivir right now seeing as they're seeing an effect from the drug it is their obligation now to inform those patients of that and give them access to the drug, um, seeing that it could improve their chances of recovery or the speed of their recovery at least.